The Type 214 class combines the features of highly successful Type 209 and Type 212A classes. Yet the diesel electric submarine with an air independent propulsion system, shortly AIP, has experienced many technical problems and has yet to become a shining star in the international market like its predecessor Type 209 class. As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the Type 214 class and what might cause this outcome. The Type 214 class is currently the most widely preferred diesel electric submarine with an AIP. Although this is a noteworthy achievement, it is far behind the Type 209 class. We will first mention the features of the Type 214 class, then continue with each subclass's program histories and individual differences. Hualtzwerke Deutsche Werft, shortly HDW, developed the Type 214 class exclusively for export. As mentioned, the submarine combines the design principles of the Type 209 class and some features of the Type 212A class. Still, the company did not apply classified technologies of the second one. The pressure hull of the Type 214 class is made of HY80 steel in the inner frame and HY100 steel in the outer hull, significantly increasing the diving depth compared to the Type 209 class. Its smooth design with minimal surface openings minimizes the flow noise during submerged cruises. Moreover, some sound absorbing materials are applied to the hull to further reduce the acoustic signature. The fin sail is made of carbon fiber reinforced plastic. The hallmark of the Type 214 class is undoubtedly its Siemens AIP system with proton exchange membrane compressed hydrogen fuel cells. Since the Type 212A class has a double hull, its oxygen and hydrogen tanks are separate outside the cruise space between the pressure and outer light hull. It was the first HDW submarine to be equipped with an AIP and as such, the company preferred the double hull due to concerns about the risk of hydrogen storage areas. However, as design know-how was accumulated, the Type 214 class was made into a single-hulled AIP. The gases are piped to the fuel cells and their reaction generates electricity and creates only water and oxygen as waste. The Siemens AIP does not emit heat and pump noise, which makes passive tracking difficult when traveling at slow speeds. The proton exchange membrane compressed hydrogen fuel cells have a much lower risk of leakage than liquid electrolytes. They have low operating temperature, which allows them to reach a suitable temperature with less heating than other fuel cell types. They offer high energy densities compared to solid oxide ones. On the other hand, water management of proton exchange membrane compressed hydrogen fuel cells AIP is difficult since water in the membrane is attracted toward the cell's cathode through polarization. The submarine can operate submerged for approximately two weeks without surfacing or snorkeling. It can also carry food, fresh water and fuel for 84 days of operation. It has streamlined sails and cross-shaped rudders. The Type 214 class has 8 533mm torpedo tubes and can carry up to 16 torpedoes and missiles. On July 24, 1998, the Hellenic Navy chose the Type 214 class as its future submarine. The contract to build three boats was signed on February 15, 2000 and a fourth one was ordered in June 2002. The first of its class, also known as the Papa Nicolis class, HS Papa Nicolis, was laid down on February 27, 2001, launched on April 22, 2004, and commissioned on November 2, 2010. She was constructed in Germany. The local Hellenic shipyards built the remaining three submarines in Greece. The last, HS Kachonis, joined the fleet on June 23, 2016. Yet, as you know, the program did not progress smoothly. During our sea trials, HS Papa Nicolis experienced many problems. The Hellenic Navy claimed the submarine suffered excessive rolling when surfaced in bad weather and extreme propeller cavitation. Besides, fuel cells were overheated. Later, new problems occurred. The output power of the AIP was inadequate. The periscope was inappropriately vibrating, the sonar flank array did not work correctly and the seawater leaked into the boat's hydraulics. HDW claimed these problems were fixed in 2006. The company stated that the Hellenic Navy kept complaining about the submarine to justify its demand for a price reduction. 
HDW refused to deliver HS Papanicolis until Greece paid all debts. The company even announced the cancellation of the contract on September 21, 2009. Yet, Athens confirmed its intention to accept the three boats built in Greece. This way, the problem was solved. The Hellenic Navy initially intended to acquire six Papanicolis class submarines. After this dispute, the plan for two additional boats was naturally dropped. Still, Greece paid the list price for six submarines. The Papanicolis class has the I-band Sphinx low probability of intercept radar mounted on a hoistable mast that doesn't penetrate the pressure hull. Its sonar has only bow and flank arrays, not towed ones. The submarine also has the Tinex-2 electronic support measure system and the Chirche torpedo cannon measure decoys. Its weapon control system is the ISUS-90. Four torpedo tubes of the Papanicolis class are suitable for launching the UGM-84 sub-harpoon missiles. According to Jane's Fighting Ships 2015-2016 edition, the complement of the Papanicolis class is 40 people. The submarine has a length of 65 meters, a beam of 6.3 meters and a drought of 6.6 meters. Its surface and submerged displacements are about 1,730 and 1,830 tons respectively. The propulsion system consists of two 1,810 horsepower MTU 16V396 SE84 diesel engines, two 161 horsepower HDW PEM fuel cells, and one Siemens Permazun electric motor. Its top surface and submerged speeds are 11 and 20 knots respectively. The range of the Papanicolis class is 12,000 nautical miles, in other words, 22,000 kilometers. Its maximum safe operation depth is 400 meters. In November 2000, South Korea ordered the first batch of three Type 214 class submarines, also known as the KSS-2 or Sonon E class. Eight years later, Seoul signed another contract to supply six boats of the second batch. HDW transferred submarine building technology, including construction plans, materials and other equipment. The local HD Hyundai Heavy Industries built three boats of each batch. The remaining three submarines of the second batch were constructed by another local company, Teu Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering, today's Hanwha Ocean. The first of its class, ROKS Sonon Yi, was laid down in October 2002, launched on June 9, 2006 and commissioned on December 27, 2007. The last boat, ROKS Shindul Saab, joined the fleet on January 31, 2020. Although some sources claim that Son on E class also suffered excessive noise problems just like the Papa Nicolis class, the Republic of Korea Navy later denied the accusation. The Son on E class has a submerged displacement of 1,890 tons and a complement of 27 people and a towed array sonar. The first batch of submarines have the UME-100 electronic support measure system, while the other six are fitted with the UME-200. It is armed with the locally developed 533mm K731 Pexano torpedoes. The South Korean submarines have the ISUS-90 weapon control system and the Sphinx low probability of intercept radar. On April 24, 2004, Portugal ordered two Type 214 class submarines, also known as the Tridente or Type 209 PN class. The agreement also included a third boat as an option. The first of its class, NRP Tridente, was laid down on March 7, 2005, launched on July 15, 2008, and commissioned on June 17, 2010. The second and last boat, NRP Arpon, joined the fleet on April 28, 2011. They initially had the UGM-84 Harpoon Block 1 launching capability alongside 533mm IF-21 Black Shark torpedoes. After 2014, the Tridente class submarines were modernized and received the new Block 2 missiles with land attack capability. The Type 209 PN class has surfaced and submerged displacements of 1,840 and 2,020 tons respectively. It is 67.9 meters long. The Portuguese boats do not have a towed array sonar, but are fitted with a mine avoidance sonar. The Tridente class has a 33-person complement. It can also carry 14 marines. The submarine has the UME-200 electronic support measure system, the ISUS-90 weapon control system, 
and the KH-1007 radar. On July 2, 2009, Turkey ordered six Type 214 class submarines, also known as the Type 214 TN or Reis class. According to the agreement, HDW would transfer submarine building technology, including construction plans, materials and other equipment. At the same time, the boat would be modified to meet the Turkish Navy's requirements and be fitted with locally developed subsystems. All Turkish submarines are being built in Turkey. The Turkish Navy initially planned to receive the first submarine in 2017, yet the program experienced delays. The first of its class, TCG Piri Reis was laid down on September 28, 2015, launched on December 22, 2019 and commissioned on August 24, 2024. The last, TCG Selman Reis is expected to join the fleet in 2029. The race class has a hydrodynamically improved hull design and a length of 68.5 meters. Its surface and submerged displacements are 1,845 and 2,023 tons respectively. The boat's complement is 27 people and it can carry an 11-person special forces unit. The race class is currently armed with 533mm DM-2A4 and Mark 46 Mod 60 torpedoes and UGM-84 sub-harpoon missiles. The locally developed Akya torpedo and a submarine launch variant of the Atmaja missile will replace them. The submarine's navigation, data management, data link, torpedo countermeasure and electronic support measure systems are also locally developed. The Turkish boats have a towed array sonar. The Type 214 class has lost some former Type 209 class users such as Brazil, Chile, India and Indonesia to the Skopen class. Why? As mentioned in the Papa Nicolides class section, the submarine suffered some critical problems. Incorporating a proven design with proven high-tech subsystems is generally efficient. Yet, it can occasionally backfire. Starting from scratch sometimes makes design work more manageable, while combining already existing parts could cause complications. This problem affected the Type 214 class. HDW intended to offer a familiar design with proven high-tech subsystems to the former Type 209 class customers. Yet, integration work brought many complications. Without solving them, the company signed an agreement with Greece, making HS Papanicolis a prototype rather than an end product. This business model has naturally caused suspicion for new customers. Besides, HDW make another business mistake by forgetting the main principle. Customer is always right. The fight over the Papanicolis class saved the money that came from Greece by demanding the cost of six submarines for four boats. Yet this attitude caused anxiety for potential buyers. They probably thought that if a problem occurred, the supplier would not be helpful resolving them. The Germans should have managed the crisis better. The Skopen class efficiently used the gap until the German HDW company cleaned its name. Yet it would be unfair to claim that it was the only reason for its success. NAIP gives a diesel-electric attack submarine a significant advantage, but nothing is free. It brings a sizable cost. A country whose operational areas are near waters does not need the advantage of an AIP, so it doesn't have to pay for it. Many former Type 209 class users do not require a highly expensive diesel-electric submarine with an AIP. The Skopan class offers such an option, while the Type 214 class does not. Egypt and South Africa's choice of Type 209 class, while the Type 214 class was available, was not meaningless. Still, India and Indonesia, which already preferred the Skopan class, are among the potential customers of the Type 214 class. However, according to our analysis, this German submarine will likely be less successful than its predecessor. Many countries do not require its state-of-the-art design, which makes the boat unnecessarily expensive for them. Besides, it will take some time for HDW to clean up its bad reputation for its poor business approach. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.